But the, the only thing the jiva wants to do is enjoy. So yeah, I'll give you a temporary place to enjoy. But let's see if you like it or not. Okay, that is the independence. The independence, what is our independence? To, to enjoy separate from Krishna or to enjoy with Krishna. There's no other in-between things. No, don't have. It's very clear cut. This or that. Right? The pathway is just yes or no. <laughs> Krishna or no Krishna. That's it. It's like that. <clears throat> yeah, so no matter what happens to the living entity, the Lord follows him. And that is his compassion. And he experiences, no, he, he feels as the as the Upadrasta, he can also see the suffering we go through. Just like we are conscious of our body, right? The Lord is conscious of everybody's body and what they are going through, how much they are suffering. So just imagine, he understands each and every one of our suffering, the pain, you know. And when you cause another person suffering, he also knows how much you are causing another person suffering. <laughs> so he knows that and he also knows what the what rascal we are. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be careful. Because he's witnessing everything that you do. Then at the end of the day, we have to go and sit in front. And then he, they'll read all the... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you are not doing properly, then Chitraketu will say, oh, there's too much to read. <laughs> all this. Even if you hurt someone, uh, even if you un uh, unknowingly hurt, also is recorded. You know? So become devotee and then give up all these things. It's based on enjoying tendency. So we should give up. <clears throat> and so because we want to enjoy, he's with us to allow us to enjoy this material world. But at the the consequence is we suffer. And outside the body, Prabhupada writes at the end of this, uh, the last paragraph, he says, outside the body of the conditioned soul, the Supreme Personality of Godhead remains as the time factor. According to the Samkhya system of philosophy, there are 25 elements. The 24 elements already described plus the time factor make 25. According to some learned philosophers, the super soul is included to make a total of 26 elements. So there are different ways they calculate sometimes. Okay, some, uh, some groups, they will calculate certain things as one. Uh, some uh, will calculate the Pradhan and Mahatattva as, as separate, they calculate. Some just consider them as one, yeah, you know, number. It's a, it's a system of counting in some so here Prabhupada says, according to some learner, the super soul is included. Some may not include the super soul like that. Okay. So Prabhu, to your previous point, um, so Upadrishta Anumanta, so if two devotees are arguing and fighting about something, yes. and both have different perspectives, yes. so the super soul is actually suffering through those agonizing moments because um, one person is trying to I wouldn't say the super soul suffers. The, mm -hmm. the Supreme Lord never suffers, but he feels <laughs> our our suffering. Yeah, it hurts him. You can say in that sense. Because both of them claim to be his devotees. Yes. And both of them are saying. Yeah, so it hurts him to see. Yeah. And, but both of them are hurting him. In, in that, that sense, like like Prabhupada gives that the father comes from a journey and all the children want to massage. And instead of massaging nicely, they are all fighting <laughs> and punching and beating the father up. So the Lord will feel that kind of pain. Uh, won't say suffer, but we may feel our. Yeah. So we shouldn't. We should always. Try. Rabbi's point is always cooperate. I mean, differences can be there, but we cooperate. If there's no differences, then we are not. We are robots. So there must be differences. Some may say one thing, another person say, but but we should cooperate in any case. Okay, this is my opinion, but doesn't mean I'm your enemy. <laughs> right? If you can't see that, then you're a neophyte. Qualified. Huh? Neophyte means fight. Yeah, neophyte, neophyte. <laughs> <laughs> That's what will happen. You will see in your own lives and your own experiences. <coughs> right? So, we, so thus far, all these are 
under the time thing, you know, from 16, 17, 18, 19 verses, everything is determined with time and the Lord as a super soul. Text 19. Daivat Shubhita Dharminyam Swasyam Yonao Parapuman Adatta Viryam Sasuta Mahatatvam Hiranmayam Okay. After the Supreme Personality of Godhead impregnates material nature with his internal potency, material nature delivers the sum total of the cosmic intelligence, which is known as Hiranmaya. This takes place in material nature when she is agitated by the destinations of the conditioned souls. So this Hiranmaya is actually the Mahatattva. Okay. Now, the Lord impregnates material nature with his internal potency. This internal potency is? Rama. You can say Brahma Devi, but it also includes the? Jivas. Jivas also. The, he is impregnating the material nature. As the father impregnates the mother, so the Jivas are within this internal potency. You can say, yeah, brought in by Rama Devi. So this Hiranmaya is same as the Hiranmaya Patrena that was? No, no. Hiranmaya means the, the once the Pradhan is impregnated, it turns golden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that Hiranmaya is this. Golden, golden hue, basically. Huh? This, uh, living entities are not internal energy, right? They are marginal energy. Mm -hmm. so why yeah, marginal is spiritual, no? We are also spirit, no? Oh, that too. Yeah, we are spirit. Yeah. So we are still a part of internal potency. Okay. Yeah. We are for the enjoyment of the Lord. Hmm. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say Mahatattva. Yeah, so this is Mahatattva. <coughs> okay. So Prabhupada writes, material nature's primal factor is the Mahatattva, a breeding source of all varieties. This part of material nature, which is called Pradhan as well as Brahman, is impregnated by the Supreme Person of God and delivers varieties of living entities. So this is what happens. All the living entities come in. They have so many desires. So all this wanting to and do. So the material nature is now understands what it has to do for each living entity. You need this body. You need that and so on. That's going to happen. That's the cosmic <coughs> intel intelligence is coming up now. So that will be given as to each living entity will be a portion of that cosmic intelligence is a portion. Okay. <coughs> this thing going to move, sorry. All right. So basically, here is how different living entities get different bodies. And Prabhupada talks about it in the, in the whole purport. I'm not going to go into that. Text twenty. Vishwamatma gatam yanjan. Vishwamatma gatam yanjan. Utasto jagat ankuraha. Utasto jagat ankuraha. Swate jasat pibat. Tibram, Atma Praswa Panantamaha. Thus, after manifesting variegatedness, the effulgent Mahatattva, which contains all the universes within itself, which is the root of all cosmic manifestations and which is not destroyed in the time of annihilation, swallows the darkness that covered the effulgence at the time of dissolution. So when there's nothing, it's all dark. You know? So when Pradhan is also dark. So when the Jiva comes in, then the whole thing gets light up. <laughs> now there's some reason to do activity. <laughs> Before that, everything is dormant. Okay. 
Remember that the map there, this one corner of the spiritual is all this dark. So once it's activated, the whole mouth will become golden and then it spreads to the different universes. Golden globes covers it and then all the <coughs> Garbhadakasha, Vishnu and all, they take over the subsequent roles within each universe. Right? Prabhupada writes um, in the in the purport. Prabhupada writes, since the supreme person of God is ever existing, all blissful and full of knowledge, his different energies are also ever existing in the dormant stage. Okay, thus when the Mahatattva was created, it manifested the material ego and swallowed up the darkness, which covered the cosmic manifestation at the time of dissolution. So once dissolution means everything is gone. Okay. So therefore it was dark. So now it's coming again. So this thing is growing. <coughs> the whole Mahatattva, like the clouds you see there. Yeah. The grey clouds where Karana uh, Dagasha Vishnu is lying there. Yeah. That's the Mahatattva, the grey clouds. And then from it, you can see, it looks like lightning, but that's the effulgence coming. <laughs> okay. And Prabhupada writes towards the end, similarly, when the Mahatattva appears after this night of dissolution, the effulgence is manifested to exhibit the variegatedness of this material world. Now, earlier on in the third, fifth chapter, Srila Prabhupada writes also about the Mahatattva. He explains that the Mahatattva is the total consciousness. Okay? Because the portion of it is represented in every one of our intellects. Okay? The Mahatattva is directly connected with the Supreme Consciousness, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But still it appears as matter. Okay? The Mahatattva or it's called shadow of pure consciousness. Okay. Uh, is the germinating place of all creation. So that's why all these different uh, universes will be covered by that and then all the subsequent uh, creation starts. It is pure goodness, Prabhupada writes, but it has a slight uh, addition of uh, the material mode of passion. So it is not completely pure. Okay, It has and because of that, activity is generated from that point onwards. Okay. Since the Mahatma is not annihilated, right? that's what the previous. So that's yeah, it's not annihilated. It just manifests and unmanifests. Okay. So material elements are annihilated. No, material elements also not annihilated. They go into dormant Change. stage. Mm. Nothing is, uh, everything is just like you, you build a robot and then it functions and you take all the parts and then you can't function. So the, okay. the cosmic manifestation mm -hmm. is temporary. Mm -hmm. But the, the Pradhan, the Mahatattva is always there. Yeah. You can just, they manifest and unmanifest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, false ego is created at, at the time of Mahatattva. A portion of the Mahatattva is the false ego created. Okay. So, then there was a question that we asked. So, at that time, it's good. And it's created because of the desires of the living entities. Yeah. They also have the previous living entities in the body of Mahatma. They also have the false ego. So, that's what they saw. <laughs> Well, they are they're, they're all dormant. They are re-injected. Then it starts because of their desires. Yeah. But at the time when they are sleeping, they don't have any body, anything. They are just inanimate. Just they like don't the, have subtle bodies. Uh, subtle bodies all are, are like... Uh, inert, inert stage. Inert stage. Yeah. But no false ego like that. At that moment, they are all dormant, so they are not acting on the false ego yet. But the desire is there to to so the Lord smiles, and then he says, "Okay, it's time for creation." 
So I asked the same question to Maharaj, Rambhad Maharaj. Yeah. I said that when we are in the body of Mahavishnu, we don't get purified. He said it doesn't happen like that. Not because, like that. <laughs> uh, I was trying to find a shortcut to that. <laughs> no. I mean, we are in a sense associating with the Lord, but we are not. Still, you'll have to come and. Yeah, because we are not actually uh, consciously wanting to serve him, mm-hmm. even though we are in his body. Yeah. So therefore, we are still covered. The subtle body is material, Prabhu? Subtle body is also material. Yeah. So, how, how does it enter Lord's... Lord's it's part of the, the jiva's uh, like, uh, desire. When right. matter... Lord doesn't touch matter, is, as we understand. Yeah, but everything comes but from this him. is matter again. <laughs> it's all inside him. Yeah, everything comes from him. Uh, <laughs> that technology, I don't know how he holds it. <laughs> that way he enters every... He, he can enter the atom and still remain supreme lord i don't see how he cannot not know what the jiva's desires are um, that subtle thing is still there within the jiva it is composed but he holds the jiva within himself so when it's when the jivas is releasing then their desires come at the time when they come to the mahatat the uh, <coughs> the desires is what generates the whole thing so the material nature is like, okay, time to act. Now we have uh, customers. <laughs> yeah. So can we say the difference between manifest and unmanifest is time is not acting and unmanifest and time is acting and manifest or is it more complex? It's complex mm-hmm. because you still have, need the jivas. Okay. Jivas and your desires is required with time factor. So unmanifest jivas are separate, they are inside, right? Inside. Unmanifest means uh, the jivas are not in the mahatat. They have to be there for it to make. Otherwise, they have no customers. No? So it's like pradhan versus mahatat. Yeah, that's it. That's, okay. that's it. Manifested so, state means everything the, Everything is activated at the same time. Unmanifested, everything is just... <laughs> so those three things are missing. Then. Karma and then yes, jiva. Jiva. And, okay. yeah. Okay. Text twenty-one, right? Yeah. Yatat sattva gunam swacham. Yatat sattva gunam swacham. Shantam bhagavata padam. Shantam bhagavata padam. Yat ahu vasudeva kiam. Yat ahu vasudeva kiam. Chittam tan mahat atmakam. Chittam tan mahat atmakam. Okay. So chitta here. Is consciousness. The mode of goodness, which is the clear, sober status of understanding the personality of Godhead, and which is generally called Vasudeva or consciousness, becomes manifest in the Mahatattva. Here is interesting because here is goodness, okay, but it's, it is still pure goodness. But it's funny, we read and we'll find out. <laughs> The Vasudeva manifestation of the status of understanding the Supreme Personality of God is called pure goodness or Shuddha Sattva. In the Shuddha Sattva status, there is no infringement of the other qualities, namely passion and ignorance. In the Vedic literature, there is mention of the Lord's expansions as the four personalities of God. Vasudeva, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, Aniruddha. Here in the reappearance of the Mahatattva, the four expansions of Godhead occur. He who is seated within a super soul expands first as Vasudeva. So from these four expansions are coming from the super soul. Okay? And they have a function also within this material world also. They control certain aspects. The Vasudeva stage is free from infringement by material desires. Okay, That means if you are at that stage, you don't have material desires. You are not interested in material things. And it's the status in which one can understand the Supreme Person and Godhead. Or the objective, who is the Supreme Lord, which is described in the Bhagavad Gita as Adbhuta. This is another feature of the Mahatattva. The Vasudeva expansion is also called Krishna Consciousness. So whenever you do devotional service, you are at the stage of Vasudeva. But the difference is we cannot sustain it because of our... Cosmos. 
desires. We are not giving up. We are holding on to all our material desires. If you give up that, then you are always in Vasudev, and then you will come to the stage of pure Vishuddha. Hmm? Yeah. This is another feature of Mahatma. The Vasudev explanation is also called Krishna, for it is free from all changes of material passion and ignorance. This clear state of understanding helps one to know the Supreme Person of Godhead. The Vasudeva status is also explained in Bhagavad Gita as Shetragya, which refers to the knower of the field of activities as well as the supernova. The living being who has occupied a particular type of body knows the body, but the supernova, Vasudeva, knows not only a particular type of body, but also the field of activities in all different varieties of bodies. We, we just talked about it. In order to be clear, to be situated in clear consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one must worship Vasudeva. Vasudeva is Krishna alone. When Krishna or Vishnu is alone, without the accompaniment of his internal energy, he is Vasudeva. <coughs> Interesting, huh? When he is accompanied by his internal potency, he is called Dwarakadesh. <laughs> Remember, Vasudev goes to Dwaraka and then he marries and then he becomes Dwarakadesh. To have clear consciousness of Krishna consciousness, one has to worship Vasudev. It is also explained in Bhagavad Gita that after many, many births, one surrenders to Vasudev, Vasudevam Sarvamiti, the Mahatma Sudullava. So, in order to get released from the false ego, which makes us attached to our body, family, material things and so on, one has to worship Shankarshana. Shankarshana is also worshipped through Lord Shiva, because Lord Shiva worships Shankarshana. And it's interesting here, Prabhupada says, the snakes which cover the body of Lord Shiva are representations of Shankarshana. Mm -hmm. Shankarshana is who? Mm -hmm. Ananta Dev. Ananda Dev is an expansion of Balaram. Mm. So is Ananda Dev is thousand headed? Who? Mm. Snake. Snake. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so that is Sankarshan. He has been worshipped by Lord Shiva. One who's actually a worshipper of Lord Shiva as a devotee of Shankarshana can be released from false material ego. If one wants to get free from mental disturbances, one has to worship Aniruddha. So he is in charge of the mm. mind. For this purpose, worship of the moon planet is also recommended in Vedic scriptures. So Soma is connected to Aniruddha. Aniruddha. Yeah. Similarly, to be fixed in one's, that means Soma is empowered by Aniruddha like that. Okay. Similarly, to be fixed in one's intelligence, one has to worship Pradyumna, who is rich through the worship of Brahma. Brahma is the most intelligent person, so he is representing that. So he is empowered by Pradyumna. So, <coughs> so Chitta is one of no, the, yeah. Where does sun fit in all this? Huh? Sun. 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 Because we all actually like worship sun, right? Yeah. Where does sun fit? Like, from who is sun expanding? Sun is the representation of? The eyes of the Lord. Yesterday we discussed Brahma Jyoti. Yes, so he's connected to the Supreme Lord. <laughs> yeah, he's also empowered by the Lord to 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 this the what is it? To spread the rays of the sunlight. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes the sun God is an empowered person. Sometimes he's Surya Narayan himself. Surya is sometimes empowered, or sometimes he's Narayan. So, in practically, we don't worship uh, Vasudeva, Sankarshana, and Ruddha and Pradyumna. We just chant the Hare Krishna mantra, which technically should have yeah. all four personalities. True, included true. In but the whole idea is you have to become personal, but you're not becoming personal. We, we, we say we chant, right? I highlighted this yesterday, or we chant. But what, what are you chanting? Who are you chanting for? Remember, I said yesterday we chant, but we are actually counting. <laughs> You, you, you're not even telling for mind, you're just counting to say, I want to finish that number. But actually, the mood is wrong. You know, we are, all this thing, is, remember why we are reading this to understand that we are nobody. 
and there's somebody who's trying to help us help us to go back to understand who the person we are supposed to love so that is the whole idea is to develop this mood of dependency on the supreme law mood of loving relationship so when you change you have to cry out you know it's going to take a while <laughs> but you have to develop that you have to start you know instead of wasting time with all kinds of trying to get the material world correct <laughs> try to get the sadhana f- perfect <laughs> that's what we do right we're trying to get our material life together but actually if you remember earlier on prabhat said the subset of spiritual spiritual energy is matter it's not the other way around mm. so if you get your spiritual acts together then you shouldn't have any problems ideally like the pandavas they didn't have any problems interesting but they were going through so much difficulties but they didn't have any problems worshiping narayan <laughs> they didn't say let's stop and fight or no they only fought because after they discussed it very clearly right to to uphold the desires of uh, krishna they went to into battle because krishna wanted dharma to be re established so they are part of his uh, instrument remember in the 11th chapter of the time i am destroyer of all worlds you know i come here to destroy everyone except for you pandava <laughs> everyone is dead already <laughs> dead so this are you know you have to become personal in your reading of bhagavatam bhagavad gita you cannot just be gyanis bahunam janmana mante gyanam mam prabhajante when are you going to give up that gyana and surrender take bow huh? so many lives it takes exactly uh, why how about is given us the bridge Let's cross over pay the toll <laughs> what is that gaudiyam hmm? develop the devotion huh? service yes. attitude you you serve devotees favorably you <coughs> develop laulium It's not going to happen if you if you are thinking I'm one better than the other guy, <laughs> or you know I'll show him better. Like that, that, it's not that's not our whole philosophy. It's wrong. Right? That's the reason why we are trapped in here. <laughs> you can't uh, adopt that kind of lifestyle anymore. Now you know you have to act on it. You cannot say, "Well, my life, these children, you know, debts to pay, this and that." You know? I mean, I think about it. It's been eleven years since I came into the Krishna class. Yeah. yeah. So then, and still asking the same questions. Exactly. Right. So then, you, I mean, it's good. But the point is, do you sit at home and wonder why you are not making advancement? Do you think like? If you're not, then you have a problem. Do you wonder why you're suffering so much and still not giving up? If you're not thinking like that, you have a problem. <laughs> right probably wanted a revolution means we have to re- revolt in here from towards to what your own uh, mental mental uh, attitudes you know is wrong what we are doing is wrong you know after what probably went through and we are not changing our lifestyles right we don't we don't practice the spiritual well every, everything is loving here everything is focus fighting fighting <coughs> So that means we are not practicing properly. Difficulties will be there for sure because of our past karma and present uh, foolish mistakes. Yeah, for sure. But we should be rising above all those things. You know? Help one another to make advancement, uh, not help one another to get a. You know, Papa says the the Maya Maris will climb over one another to become the guru. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right we are not like that we are supposed to hey come let's go together if, if that kind of consciousness doesn't develop that means you're not practicing properly you need a heart surgery <laughs> open heart surgery <laughs> no honestly it's your own thing you know i can't do anything i can only say whatever little i can say you know uh, like i said it's pointless quoting verses and giving fantastic class if you are not going to change then my job is 
waste. Well, your guru also is doing so much, and their job is also wasted if you're not going to do it, right? So much energy and effort we all, uh, I mean, they are putting you. Huh? Text 22, right? Swachatvam avikaritvam Shantatvam iti chetasaha Vritti vir lakshanam proctum, Yatapam prakriti para, After the manifestation of the Mahatattva, these features appear simultaneously as water in its natural state before coming in contact with earth is clear, sweet, and unruffled, so the characteristic traits of pure consciousness are complete serenity, clarity, and freedom from distraction. So, at the creation time, the pure status of consciousness is that. That means you are able to be Krishna conscious. You are able to be Krishna conscious. Okay? But what happens? Just after creation, consciousness is not polluted. The more one becomes materially contaminated, however, the more consciousness becomes obscured. All right. So then, what is the cure? So it's obscured, so we need to cure it. So, huh? That means to, 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 to become more devotional. The, in your life, you are you are in the material world. So you, you, there's no choice. You will be with matter wherever you go. But the consciousness <coughs> has to see Krishna. A consciousness has to be developed in such a way that you will you will use it service for Krishna. Remember, we were talking yesterday. Even at work, you have to see that is not your. Who are you? I asked, right? Who are you first? Are you a devotee or a manager? First thing in the morning when you get up, who are you? <laughs> what am I? <laughs> K or me? Right? Sanadhan Goswami asks. He asks Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who am I? <laughs> yeah. So then you have to ask yourself, who am I first? And then you start your day. Then your aims will be correct. If you don't think like that, it's very hard to change because your mind is very hard to control. Otherwise, you have to start controlling from the time you get up. You have to. That's why regulation. We regulate why? So the mind cannot do what it wants to anyhow, haphazardly. So yeah, so ask yourself, who am I? What is my role in this thing? Uh, pure state of consciousness we are supposed to be, but we are not. Why? Because we are not thinking like that. So what are the sequences that make me not think like that? So every day you have to think, because sometimes it will be a while before you can get out of that kind of uh, ideology or behavior. You know, it's, it's not easy. Yes, it's not easy. Right? You wake up and say, oh, I have to go work and so on. No, you should think, who am I? I'm, I'm servant of Krishna. Servant of my spiritual master, servant of my God wives, God sisters. Okay, now what is my role? What is my prescribed duties? <laughs> As a devotee of the Lord and a disciple or so, I have to take care of this, that, and that. Then you act on it. Nirvanda Krishna Sambandhe, it has to be connected. So that way, everything is performed in through Vairagya. Yeah, so you, you are not worried about the results when you're doing your duty. Right? When you ask your child to study, you're not thinking he will become a great uh, scholar so that I will be proud. Then you you have a problem. You should think, I have I given him enough spiritual knowledge that he will be able to understand Krishna consciousness? That is the main thing. The other things are, are not. Material thing is a subsidi subsidi subsidiary. Question again is, are you willing to think like that? <laughs> right? If you're not going to think like that, you will have problems in practicing Krishna consciousness. 
So the challenge I see this is personally, when I'm doing service, yes, I'm doing service. But when I'm doing other things, that Nirbandha Krishna Sambandha is not coming. So then you have to ask yourself, well, how... The, when you don't ask, then you, you leave it to the situation or the thing. Then you are leaving it to the material energy. But if you think about it, then you are connecting somehow, right? The fact that you think means that Krishna will say, hey, he's thinking. So you're connecting to the super soul. You have to. Your behavior must, then then you'll change. Subsequently, you'll change. Any action you do, you'll, you'll know you're doing it for the right reason. Blindly, who's doing? Even Arjuna in the battlefield. Kshatriyas fighting. Yeah, all the Kshatriyas are fighting. But what was the difference? What did Krishna tell Arjuna? Huh? Keep me Marmana Vamapasya. Yeah. Keep me in your Fight mind. For me. Fight for me. Anusmari Jajjati. Remember me. Remember me as you are doing your service. <laughs> and, and, and he says you are not. You are not entitled to the fruits of these activities. That is the main thing. If you think you are entitled to whatever actions you are doing. Then that is one of the biggest problems. So basically I am still in karma. Platform, yeah, you're still in karma. Supposedly bhakti platform, but really yeah, so you're more karma, karma yoga, platform. karma yogi, more, more karma. <laughs> now one more thing is when we <coughs> when we try to do the spiritual order, even the kids they don't want to take it because. But you become Krishna conscious first. Yeah, but even though they say like you are doing so much, you can. No, you become that. first. You will practice nicely then. Krishna will give you the intelligence to give it to them, right? If you are not, if you are not practicing properly, how you can tell your children? They will say you are not doing it. So the, oftentimes the children will not listen to the parents because the parents are not performing properly in the activities. You know? I've seen uh, parents like, you know, I've seen, you know, they will be smoking and then the kids will uh, take the say, don't touch, you're not supposed to smoke. <laughs> but they're smoking. <laughs> now, it's only a matter of time before the kids will smoke, yeah, with the parents sharing the same <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> right? Same thing, yeah. Yeah, Sri Lakshmi was doing this under Prabhu's your class, right? For some time she came, maybe 13th or 14th. So she points out my mistake. She says, but you are not doing it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to talk to them. Well, it's, that's... We are also reading Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. You are learning very smart. That's the challenge, actually. No, the point is, it's not that. It's not a question of my child is more smarter. No, it's a question is, how are you performing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bottom line is, if you're not performing, you can't guide other person. Okay? So you just do yours nicely. Now, automatically, it will all fall in place. Right, Krishna will help you if you're sincere. <clears throat> so the natural state is what? Like a clear, sweet and unreffined. <laughs> you know? So our consciousness should be like that. We should be clear what we are doing and uh, our service should be sweet. We shouldn't be, oh man, why I have to go early in the morning? <laughs> it should be, wow, you know, we're not in a, in a whimsical way we do things. Serenity, clarity, freedom from distraction. All this should be there. <coughs> but these are appearing simultaneously. Huh? These are all appearing simultaneously. Yes. It's not that there is a <coughs> period where is goodness is there. Yeah, so if you do it properly, it will appear simultaneously. <laughs> So Prabhupada writes here, as in clear, unagitated water, free from impurities, one can see everything clearly. So in pure consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one can see things as they are. So that means you ha you should be able to see why you're doing certain things in a certain way and why it is Krishna conscious. So that means you, every day you do some activities and, and if you're doing it, without even knowing it's it's Krishna conscious or not, then you are, you are in trouble, no? Correct? Yeah, automatically, like in uh, what the auto drive, you know, like that. Automotive. Huh? Automotive. 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 <coughs> so 
Prabhupada says one can see the reflection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and one can see his own existence as well. This state of consciousness is very pleasing, transparent and sober all together. In the beginning, consciousness is pure. Though it is pure, it is still composed of material goodness. Okay? That's the difference. In here, the goodness it still has some material thing. Even though the consciousness is pure, it has some material goodness in it. Text 23 and 23. Because if it didn't have material goodness, we would not have even come here. Exactly. There is some material goodness in the beginning. Yeah. And now, of course, the more you, you are going towards material lifestyle, then that becomes covered by passion and ignorance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And longer we stay in the material yeah. world. Yeah. So the question again, you know, you, you talk like that, but the question I always ask you is, what do you want to do about it? So we are forced to do... Who is forcing you? We are forced to go into... Who practice. is forcing you? Because of the circumstances. Who is forcing you? Huh? Material. Who is forcing you? You're blaming it? material energy. <laughs> you can't blame anybody. It's already very clear from the beginning, the creation. It's nobody's, uh, not Krishna's fault, not the material energy's fault. Material energy is doing what Krishna wants it to do and it's doing her job very nicely. You are not doing your job. You want to enjoy, and then you're saying circumstances. Who created the circumstances? You. Yeah, so then why are you blaming the circumstances? You should say, my, it's my fault. You can say, I am drowning in this, and I don't know what to do. Someone come and help me like that. Right? That makes more sense. That means you're honest. But if you keep going blaming everything except yourself, then you're not owning the problem. Right now, in big terminologies, right, in the modern thing, own the problem. <laughs> own the problem. <laughs> own the problem. You are the problem. Taking the responsibility of it. Yeah. So, continuing 23 24, Mahatma. <laughs> Vikurvana, Bhagavad Vidya Sambhava, Bhagavad Vidya Sambhava, Vya Shakti Rahankara, Vya Shakti Rahankara, Jividha Samapadhyata, Jividha Samapadhyata, Vaikarikas Taijasascha, Vaikarikas Taijasascha, Tamasas Chayato Bhava, Tamasas Chayato Manasas Chandriya Namcha, Manasas Chandriya Namcha, Udanam Mahatamati, Udanam Mahatamati. Material ego springs up from the Mahatattva. There you go. That's how it is. Which evolved from the Lord's own energy. So it's still Sarga. The material ego is endowed predominantly with active power of three kinds good, passionate, and ignorant. It is from these three types of material ego that the mind, the senses of perception, the organs of action, and the gross elements evolve. So our desires cause the creation of the false ego. And then the false ego <coughs> combines with the three modes to create. The mind, the senses, the organs of action, everything, so that we can enjoy the material nature. Otherwise, we, we don't know how to enjoy the material nature, independently of Krishna. It is set up for us to <coughs> enjoy our desires. Yeah. Oh, I have a very silly question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we see many people who are actually, they don't have eyes, they, they cannot hear and everything, right? So from this verse, the senses of perception and the organs of the action, they are getting created because of the desires of the living entity. So does that mean that who, whoever is actually deprived of these organs from which they can actually enjoy the senses? Yes. So they are actually, does it mean that they, they desire to enjoy through some other means other than 
like it depends I, on their karma and so on. You can't just uh, you know some depends on the living entity. Some living entities don't have eyes and stuff like that. But it's due to different uh, uh, desires plus offenses and so on. You know, uh, you take birth in different categories. Some who uh, do not accept certain things uh, do not accept supreme lord so they have to take birth in a different lower and lower species of existence but in human beings in the human being generally it is due to past karma, karma like dhritarashtra became blind huh? dhritarashtra became blind because of some offense yeah so according to him dhritarashtra is blind <laughs> because of some offense <laughs> yeah it's like that yeah so from past they misuse or they offended somebody uh, so, or you see something and then you pretend you didn't see, so, <laughs> and the next life you don't have eyes because you don't see the right things. So you misuse of the sight. All your life you see the things you don't want to correct. You just ignore, turn away. So the Lord say, why you need the eyes then? Right? Yeah. Or you eat the wrong things, not the special, and then you take birth as pigs and all other kinds of living entities. Right? right? Yeah. So it's like that. It's determined by our desire, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you say someone is born like that, it's generally if you are missing something, means you have offended some something mm -hmm. or due to past karma. Like that. Yeah. Okay, Prabhupada writes in the purpose, in the beginning from clear consciousness or the pure state of Krishna consciousness, the first contamination sprang up. <laughs> so you're coming into contact with the to enjoy it. So the first contamination springs up. This is called false ego. Okay. So this is called false ego. Or identification of the body as self. Very difficult, you know, because I remember the false ego combines with all eyes, intelligence, everything. False ego. So your whole body is false. <laughs> Identifying with that. I am this now. So it's amazing the way the, the Lord has made it for us to enjoy. <laughs> so the marginal independence, Prabhupada explains, allows us to forget Krishna. That is our free will. You can forget because you, you want to enjoy Krishna or Maya. That's it. So if you want to enjoy Maya, you must forget Krishna. You have to forget Krishna. Otherwise, you cannot enjoy. Remember, now that you know Krishna consciousness, it's very hard to watch Bollywood shows and so on. Even if you turn it on, you don't feel as more as much enjoyment as you used to. But if you have, if you still have enjoyment, then you have a problem. <laughs> you should feel, oh, this is, you know, I don't like it anymore. Or, you, you know, your material desire should be going down. That's my point. So, because they want to enjoy separate from Krishna, that independence will allow them to forget Krishna. It happens very fast. <laughs> Yesterday we gave the example of stealing the water. Right, yeah. Like I gave the example of the cowherd boy. <laughs> taking the water and thinking I can drink, and that's it, boom. He was going through some lifetime somewhere. <laughs> I mean, that's the story. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. See, Prabhupada also says people take up the Krishna conscious process, uh, then, then they are doing so nicely, suddenly they give up. Right? Because they forget mm -hmm. the purpose of doing Krishna conscious activities. And they think enjoying material life is important. So we may also take initiation <coughs> and all, and then, and then we may still come to the Guru's class and so on, but then we may not be practicing because we are not thinking of Krishna anymore. So that's, so Prabhupada says that, you know, many instances in which someone acting Krishna suddenly changes. So then he gives this 
uh, example from Upanishads where the path of spiritual life or realization is just like the sharp edge of a razor. Prabhupada always gives this example. The example is very appropriate, he says. <laughs> One shaves his cheeks with a very sharp razor very nicely, but as soon as his attention is diverted from the activity, he immediately cuts his cheek because he mishandles it. So that's our position. As soon as you forget Krishna, that's it. As soon as you forget to concentrate on... So that means the devotees in, in the spiritual world are 100% focused on Krishna. What? You can see what the, the example means that there's no deviation. Their mind is 100% Krishna. <laughs> we 100%. <laughs> now you see where what what we need to do to become pure devotees. Hmm? Not easy, no? So therefore you have to be sincere. Because it's not so hard, your, your attempt should be so sincere. And then you get the mercy of the Supreme Lord, mercy of the uh, spiritual master. So in the spiritual world it is, you are always concentrating on the Lord. Yeah. For his satisfaction, so you are, whatever your needs are, are automatically fulfilled. Exactly. <laughs> but coming to that understanding is so difficult. Actually. It is difficult. That's why I'm saying you have to think about it. Because that, when, I, when you actually <coughs> told me that example, when you told us that example yesterday that... Uh, Gopa wanted to drink water yeah. for a fraction of a second. I thought, what is wrong in that? <laughs> <laughs> but then, then it actually makes sense. When yeah. You are thinking always of the law. Yes. Then you won't have that thirst. Like, he will take care. Yeah, he will take care. They will drink together. Yeah. Right? When they take lunch, they eat together. So when Brahma stole the coward boys, you know how angry Krishna was? Right? Remember when Brahma comes, Krishna don't even want to look at him. And then Brahma realized his mistake and he cried and then he said, I'll become the worst, the lowest. And then he became a Muslim. Haridas Thakur. That was his uh, repentance. He, wanted, he said, I'll come like that. So, you know, it's important, no? It's not, it's, it's not Bhakti by <laughs> It's not all this. It's your life is at stake. Your real life is at stake. You know, this, all this study is meant to evoke this desire to go back to Godhead, to have loving relationship with one another. If you don't practice now, you cannot. If you fight here, you'll fight there. So you can't go back. <laughs> so you can't go back. <laughs> Simple equation. Yeah. If you fight here, so you can. Yeah, you can't go back. So you got to give up there. Somewhere or other you have to give up. Prabhupada writes in the next paragraph, a couple of lines from the top. You know, he says, any inattentiveness or callousness may cause fall down. So it applies, okay, like I said, applies to the spiritual world also. This fall down is due to false ego. From the status of pure consciousness, the false ego is born because of misuse of independence. Okay? We cannot argue about why false ego arises from pure consciousness? <laughs> okay, because people will fight. They say, why? Why? I am pure. Why I have to get this? Right? Factually, there's always a chance that this will happen. And therefore, one has to be very careful. So, where is this uh, fall down happening? Is it in the mind or intelligence? or? No, it doesn't matter. So that we can focus on that. How are you going to focus? Can you focus where your intelligent mind is? It seems so much desire. Practically impossible. So by following the teachings, then you can you can purify your intelligence and the mind at the same time. Your mind is where your desires come in. Your intelligence is how you're going to fulfill the desires. <laughs> You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where it is. Where is the last located Arjuna asked Krishna? Senses, mind and intelligence. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need the easiest one to purify is? Senses. 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 <laughs> so start there. <laughs> start there. Mm -hmm. Then your mind and intelligence will calm down and then you can work on them. And the way to 
Purify my intelligence, you? Chant Hare Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna. Okay. False ego is the basic principle for all material activities. Okay. We, we, we understand that thing. Otherwise, we won't enjoy this material, which are executed in the modes of material nature, the three modes. Okay. As soon as one deviates from pure Krishna consciousness, he increases his entanglement in material reaction. <coughs> the entanglement of materialism is the material mind. And from this material mind, the senses and material organs become manifest. Okay. So one more question on the same thing. So wherever there is a prescription, there is a nishada also. So wherever there is a rule to be followed, yes, there is a nishada also that don't do this. Don't things. do this. Yes. But technically, if we are purifying our senses just by chanting, then the nishadas are not necessarily needed because progressively we'll be moving away from the nishada. Not necessarily. <clears throat> You know, the, the, the rule is like always remember Krishna and never forget. So you're saying you don't need the never forget? <laughs> you need to have that also. I mean, automatically, if you're always remembering Krishna, you always yeah, never Krishna forget. forget. Yes, that is a fact. Mm -hmm. So then the question is are you always performing devotional service? So you have to work from both sides. Yeah, so it's, therefore you need the other rules also the do's as well as the don'ts. Yeah. Because we are not at the stage where we can focus on the 24-hour chanting. We are not, right? We are not. So therefore, you have to also know, oh, I can't do that. Because our mind will be cheating as long as you are attached to the material nature. Text 25. Sahasra Shirasham Shaksha Sahasra Shirasham Shaksha Yamanantam Prachakshate Shankarshanakyam Purusham Bhutendriya Manomayam The threefold Ahankara, the source of the gross elements, the senses and the mind, is identical with them because it is their cause. It is known by the name of Shankarshana, who is directly Lord Ananta with a thousand heads. That's 26. Katritvam Karanatvam Cha Katritvam Karanatvam Cha Kadyatvam Cheti Lakshanam Kadyatvam Cheti Lakshanam Shantagora Vimodatvam Shantagora Vimodatvam Itivasya Dahankrite Itivasya Dahankrite This false ego is characterized as the doer, as an instrument and as an effect. It is further characterized as serene, active or dull according to how it is influenced by the modes of goodness, passion and ignorance. Okay, this is how, how it is manifesting. Eh? So here Prabhupada writes about how the false ego then, when it combines with different modes, it creates different aspects. So Ankara false ego is transformed to demigods. This is in the mode of goodness. Goodness, yeah. The controlling directors of material affairs. As an instrument, the false ego is represented as different senses and sense organs. This is in the mode of passion. 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 And as a result, a combination of demigods and the senses, material objects are produced. In the material world, we are producing so many things, and this is called advancement of civilization. <laughs> That's actually, the advancement of civilization is a manifestation of the false ego. One great Acharya, Naratam Das Thakur, has lamented that when one deviates from pure consciousness of Vasudeva, or Krishna consciousness, he becomes entangled in material activities. The exact words he uses are Satsanga Chadi Kainu Asate Vilasa Te Karane Lagile Ye Karma Bandha Fansha I have given up the pure status of consciousness because I wanted to enjoy in the temporary material manifestation. Therefore, I've been entangled in the network of actions and reactions. Once you come here, it's very hard to get out. That's what Narayan Dastapur is saying. You getting? 
trapped like a fish in a net. Text 27. Vaikari kar vikurvanam. Vaikari kar vikurvanam. Manastatvam majayatam. Manastatvam majayatam. Yad sankalpa vikalpadhyam. Yad sankalpa vikalpadhyam. Vartate kama sambhava. Vartate kama sambhava. Translation. From the false ego of goodness, another transformation takes place. From this evolves the mind, whose thoughts and reflections give rise to desire. So that's what the mind does. Yeah? The mind is the storehouse, the repository of all the previous impressions. Then you can go back and say, I like this, I like that. <laughs> I desire this. Then, but it doesn't know apart from that. It, it the desire is strong or not strong. Then the intelligence comes in and says, "I know how to do it. I know how to get more of this." <laughs> okay. So the intelligence is an active principle. So therefore, it is in the a different mode. So the Prabhupada gives a, a definition. The mind symptoms of the mind are determination and rejection. Sankalpa, vikalpa. Okay, which are due to different kinds of desires. So it's basically that, desires. Thinking, feeling and willing. willing, that's it. We desire that which is favorable for our sense gratification. This is where the problem is. Because the mind, if it's not trained and the intelligence is not strong, then the mind will go to the senses for fulfillment. If the intelligence is strong, then the mind cannot say go to the senses because the intelligence will say cut it off. It's the wrong thing. So therefore you have to have good intelligence. Good intelligence comes from Shastra and practicing properly. Yeah. Yeah, so we only go for, if it feels good, I'll get it. <laughs> right? The material mind is not fixed, but the very same mind can be fixed when engaged in the activities of Krishna consciousness. There you see, Samadhi can only be achieved focused on Krishna conscious activity. Otherwise, the mind is flickering. Chanchalam hi mana Krishna. It's jumping. It wants something to enjoy through the senses. Otherwise, if there's no Krishna, it will go to the senses. <laughs> So next time when you do something that is non-related to Krishna, you ask yourself, why? No, that's the way you stop yourself. Actually. And then you will have to find something higher taste. <laughs> now you understand why you need a higher taste. <laughs> yeah. You need something better than that. The enjoyment, so you need higher taste. Exactly. So you'll have better taste. So then you, you either take some prasadam, but then if you take too much, then you go fat and things like that. So you have to go and do something. <laughs> Preaching or talking, call someone on the phone and say, hey, you know, preach to me. <laughs> My mind is too bad. <laughs> Chastise me. <laughs> so that way it's positive. Param That's why Krishna tells us you need to have that. So you need to find out what is your higher taste. That is Krishna conscious. <laughs> if you don't have that, you better cultivate some higher taste. Through some service. It's either service or something. Reading, whatever. Something that makes you give up the lower taste. Otherwise, you will have... A Battle all the day. every day is a battle, right? From the day, from the time you're sleeping is battle. Before you're waking up, your mind is fighting with all kinds of desires, <laughs> right? You shouldn't be having those things. You should be thinking of Krishna, sleeping, getting up. So anyway, this is. If it's not on Krishna conscious, it's on material conscious. Prabhupada says it is hovering. <laughs> and all this rejection and acceptance is asset, temporary, but he doesn't care because he has no good intelligence to help it. 
It is stated that he whose mind is not fixed in Krishna consciousness must hover between acceptance and rejection. That means you'll never be happy. Right? You buy something, six months later, I don't like it. It's out of fashion. <laughs> you know, the options are not there when I bought this car. Now it's there. I want to exchange it. <laughs> so acceptance and injection. However advanced a man is in his in is in academic qualifications, as long as he's not fixed in Krishna consciousness, he will simply accept and reject and will never be able to fix his mind on a particular subject matter. So you will see that in your life as a, you know, you're working out there, you'll see they are very intelligent people you work with, but they cannot fix their mind on, 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 on pure thoughts. All their thoughts are on nonsense. Later on, Prabhupada will talk how they all focus only on sex desire. Whole world is running on that. Alright, we'll stop here.